Hi there. Today we're going to talk about one of the more complex topics from pre-calculus. And that topic is mathematical induction. Sorry about my arm. Dislocated my thumb. Um, but really what mathematical induction is all about is the idea of proving patterns. Okay? So we're going to prove some patterns. Things like the sum of all of the integers or the sum of the squares of integers. Um, this is something that takes place a lot when you're working with sequences, series, and maybe probability. Okay, so we're pro looking to prove patterns here. Uh, the two biggest pieces of mathematical induction are to first prove that it's true for when we for the number one. Okay, prove that the pattern is true for the number one. This gives us a basis to work from. And then what we're going to do is we're going to assume that n is equal to k. And then we're going to prove it again for k is equal, or for k plus 1. Because if we can do that, then there's really a big domino effect that happens. So those are the two big steps that we're going to take. What we're going to be proving first today, or what we're going to be proving in this video, is the sum of all integers rule. Uh, so the sum of the integers, n uh, being the term, uh, it's, you know, like the number 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus on and on and on all the way out to some number n is really equal to the formula n times n plus 1 all divided by 2. So however much you're summing out, you take that number plus or that number times 1 more than that number and that product you take and divide by 2 and that's going to be the total sum. Okay. So we're going to do our two pieces here. So we're going to prove or n is equal to 1. Okay, so we're going to prove this that is true for the pattern when we're using just the first. Okay, so the sum of 1. We know that that's going to be 1, but let's make sure that it follows the pattern. It's equal to 1 or 1 times 1 plus 1 all divided by 2, which simplifying this, we're going to get 1 times 2 over 2, which gives us Again, one. So this part is really crucial um, theory-wise just to make sure that the pattern has some type of validity. Okay? If this doesn't work out, then your pattern is off. Uh, whatever formula you're using is one that you shouldn't be using. So again, n, n equals one should always work out. Okay? So now what we need to do is prove for k plus 1. And what we really should do is take a look at what this is going to look like, or what, how this changes. So, s sub k, the sum of the first k integers, would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus da 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 da, da all the way out to k, and it really the, the formula there is going to be k times k plus 1 all divided by 2. And the sum at k plus 1 is going to be the 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on and so forth out to k plus the value k plus 1. Now essentially this entire piece is this top sum. There's the sum right above it. And so we can really just substitute in what we had before, which is that k times k plus 1, all divided by 2, and then the only thing that we're adding on is this plus k plus 1, plus the quantity k plus 1. Okay. So we're trying to make sure that this fits. It's at this point that we start to work with this idea over here this k times the quantity of k plus 1 close quantity divided by 2 plus k plus 1. Now, these are two rational expressions. k times the quantity of k plus 1 all divided by 2 plus, really, it's the quantity of k plus 1 over 1. To add these fractions, we need a like denominator. So, to change that to from a 1 to a 2, we need to multiply both numerator and denominator by the number 2. So this leaves us, and I'm going to package this and bring it right over here. 
So now I've got k times k plus 1, all divided by 2, plus 2 times the k plus 1 value, all divided by 2. Now I've got the same denominator. I'm going to just distribute here and then combine my like terms in my next steps here. So first, doing a, distribu a, a distribution, I've got k times k plus 1, which gives me k squared plus k. And then we're going to add on to that. Again, this is all over 2. This is also all over 2. 2 times k, or 2k, plus 2 times the 1, the 2. Okay. So now we have like denominators, and there's no other types of groupings uh, or sets of parentheses in my numerator. In my next line, I'm just going to combine the like terms of my numerator and make it one large fraction. So I get k squared plus 3k's plus 2. Again, the 3k's come from the k plus 2k. Okay. There's all of this over our common denominator of 2. It's at this point that we need to start breaking down our large polynomial, in this case, the quadratic. So k squared plus 3k plus 2 is a polynomial that can be factored really easily. Um, if you think about it, we got a leading coefficient here of 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Uh, the b term here is 3. So what two numbers multiply to 2 and add up to a positive 3? That's a positive 2 and positive 1. So this factors into the two binomials, k plus 1 times k plus 2. Again, the 1 and the 2 come from our factoring skills. And this is all divided by 2. And we're almost home because it requires us, hey, now we've got a k plus 1, and we had a k plus 1 from before, but this k plus 2 is really the secret piece here. Because k plus 2, just over in the side here on the sidebar, k plus 2 is really k plus 1 plus 1 more. And if we use associative property, we can group the k plus 1 and rewrite this a final time as k plus 1 being that next number in line times k plus 1, that number plus 1 more, all divided by 2. And now this has followed the same pattern as from what we had before, and we've just proven that it's true for all integers. Congratulations.